morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on the new Main Street TV. And Jennifer here, of course, to start off your morning show. And a surprise uh, visit by our good friend Pete Wilson, who has some breaking news with the morning news update. So we are super excited to hear about that. But first, our morning news update is brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. And if you are looking to buy or sell, please give Nia a call at 740-418-4135 and she'll work hard for you. All right, Pete Wilson, badeep, 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 breaking news. All right, well, yes, some uh, news came through from Columbus uh, late yesterday afternoon, early evening, that is certainly worth passing on if our local uh, listeners and viewers have not heard it yet. <clears throat> Uh, and this is a revision on the state health orders. Uh, this is now an order from the Ohio Department of Health. Uh, it was uh, effective last night, and it involves uh, the state aligning itself with the new CDC guidelines. And this is a biggie now. Uh, the Ohio Department of Health has amended its remaining health order to conform to the CDC guidance, which allows those who have been vaccinated to stop wearing masks. Uh, of course, that is a biggie. Under the CDC's new guidance, those who have not been vaccinated, however, should still wear a mask and socially distance. Now, how that's going to be enforced uh, <laughs> is, 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 a, is a major question to me. But there are some exceptions on this mask wearing business. Uh, as advised by the CDC, uh, Ohio's orders uh, recommend that everyone wear, that wears a, that everyone still wear a mask in a healthcare setting. When traveling on public transportation, and that includes airplanes, and when a, at a business or employer who chooses to require masks. Now, private businesses, offices, etc., if they still feel that they want to require their employees and their customers, their visitors, to wear masks, they have every right to do that. So, you know, just because this guideline has come down, this new health order, that doesn't mean if you go into a place that requires masks, you can say, hey, listen, the governor says I don't have to do it anymore. The CDC says I don't have to do it anymore. That is the province of that private business and that office. And there may be some who do that. Uh, also, uh, Ohio's order also continues to require masking in congregate settings. That's where there's a lot of people together. That includes nursing homes assisted living facilities and in settings with large numbers of unvaccinated individuals. This could include schools and daycare centers as well. So uh, we knew that the, you know, the governor came up with June the 2nd for uh, some of these changes. Uh, the mask wearing is getting accelerated now. That is in effect as of that health order being issued late yesterday. So that's uh, the big news there. The other part uh, is uh, details have been announced about what they're calling the state's Vax-A-Million program. That is where uh, adults can win a million dollars a week, up to a million dollars a week in these lottery-like drawings. Uh, yeah. Uh, or uh, <laughs> teenagers and preteens ages 12 to 17 can win a four-year scholarship to an Ohio college. All you have to do to be eligible, of course, you have to enter but you have to have at least one of the vaccinations. And this is all about, uh, in the next couple of weeks, trying to encourage people who have not been vaccinated to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, it is uh, taking effect starting today. Beginning Tuesday, May the 18th, Ohioans who would like to enter the drawings can opt in. I mean, it is an automatic. Uh, the health department's not gonna put you in. You've gotta put yourself in. You can do it one of two ways. You can visit ohiovaxamillion.com that is a website that is o-h-i-o-v-a-x-a-m-i-l-l-i-o-n.com ohiovaxamillion.com you google that it won't take long to find that site because it's going to be very popular or if you don't have a computer you don't want to go online you can call the ohio department of health call center uh, at 1-833-4-ASK-O-D-H and you i'm sure you can get that number easily as well. You can make a telephone call or you can go online. You can do it between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. any day. Once an Ohio resident enters, their entry will be carried over through all the drawings. It is not necessary to, uh, re, to uh, re, uh, reapply. Now, if you think that you can apply a million times and have more of a chance, they're going to filter out duplicate 
applications, so don't bother. Okay. One application will do it. A winner must meet the following eligibility requirements, and this is pretty wide, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> you have to be a citizen of the United States and a resident of Ohio, no cross river things from West Virginia or Kentucky. You must be at least 12 years of age. You must not be in prison or jail for a felony conviction. You must not be an employee or an officer of the Ohio Lottery Commission, the Ohio Department of Health, the Ohio Governor's Office, or any blood relative of these folks, of these groups. You must have received at least the first COVID-19 vaccination if receiving the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, or one dose, of course, of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Vaccination records will be verified for the winners, so they will check you out to make sure you really got vaccinated if you happen to be a winner. Winners are gonna be announced each Wednesday, starting Wednesday, May the 26th. So if you wanna get in line for that first drawing, that's eight days away, mm -hmm. you can do it today, as early as today, one of those two ways, online, or by making that call and the first drive will be Wednesday, May 26th. It will go for the next uh, four Wednesdays after that through a total of five Wednesdays. Jennifer, I'll toss it back to you. The governor received a lot of praise for uh, you know, following the CDC guidelines and, and you know pushing the opening back up on the masks and the social distancing and the health orders going off no later than June the 2nd, uh, mm -hmm. unless you know something happens to send it uh, the wrong way. But it is controversial what he's doing with the uh, lottery-like vaccination drawings. He has mm -hmm. received criticism from his own party. The Republicans want to know what you think about that. They say that we shouldn't make this thing into a game show. What do you say? Um, no, you don't I, have to say if you don't want to. But I, I mean, I don't care. I think it's um, why not? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it's thinking outside the box. They're just trying to entice people or. As our Larry said over there, bribery. But who cares, right? Like if well, it gets people to go get I the think vaccine. I should take it a step further and literally make it a game show. Yeah, let's make it a game well, show. Well, I mean, let's, make, let's make the Vax a million version of Cash Explosion. Right? No, I mean, listen, it, we've all been through a whole heck of a lot in the past year and few months. Um, why not have a little fun with it? Well, and you know, and I'm sure that people are complaining about the five million dollars, but my God, at this point, as much money as the government's throwing around, go for it. Okay, well, Jennifer, I tell you, I echo everything that that, that you said. I, um, and for the most part, I just simply like to report the news, and you can decide all that. Sure. But but I agree with you. The money that's going to be used for these drawings to pay the drawings, and uh, I'm not sure about the scholarships for the for the 12 to 17, but the money that's going to fund uh, the weekly drawings for the adults, that is coming from the federal coronavirus funds. And, and let's face so, it, that money is rolling in like, uh, like paper yeah, it is. rather than money. And uh, it, if indeed everybody agrees, and everybody seems to agree with this, that the more people are vaccinated, the better deal you are, whether you make them do it or not. And we're not, of course. But if that's the case, then why would you argue against uh, incentivizing Right. vaccinations well it's just let's just have a little fun you know why not well there, there's that there's that as, <laughs> there's that aspect too and considering when you go to a convenience like store and, and you're behind three people and they're getting those scratch offs and then they're getting another one and another and another one i believe that this will increase the vaccination rate <laughs> i think that, you're probably right this is the best chance for most of us to ever win a million dollars right you're correct okay question are you guys going to sign up well, of I course. already did. Did you already? Oh, yeah. I did it at like 9 o'clock this morning. It as soon as you, it was it hard? No, to... you, just, you just write your name, your address, and where you got your shot at. Okay. Right. And, and remember, don't do it more than once because they'll filter it out. And number two, <laughs> uh, if you didn't get vaccinated, they're going to check it out. And who knows, you might get your name in the paper or something for fraud. Oh, so. no. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were like the winner and then it was like a big lie? <laughs> that would suck so bad. Right. Okay. Oh, well, well, anyway. anyway. Uh, but all, yeah, no, I say let's go for right, it. Why but the, not? But we wanted to pass along that because that's a that's a big yeah. deal. And uh, all, all you Jackson County and Vinton Counties out there that are listening or viewing right now, that's your chance to win a, a million dollars. And also mm -hmm. the mask business is, uh, you know, of course, that affects everybody as well. So we wanted to, to tell you about that if you hadn't already heard. Also, uh, on the local front, good news and bad news. Uh, the Jackson County Health Department reported um, 
reported another COVID-related death. That is number 67. However, the numbers are still down overall. Uh, the, the latest report that we had was uh, a total of 14 cases over a seven-day period. So that's only two cases per day. That's a little bit more than the previous week, but still doggone low considering where it was. However, you know, we did have that 67th death, COVID-related death. And in Vinton County, their cases are up just a little bit too. Uh, they're up to 15 active cases now. Uh, in Vinton County, they reported uh, in, a, in the four-day period from May 14th to May 17th, they had eight cases. They had been averaging about a case a day. Now it's two cases per day. Their active cases are up from 12 to 15. And they also had, for the first time in about a month, I think, their, uh, a COVID-related death. They have now had 20. Hmm. So 67 in Jackson County, COVID-related deaths, 20 in Vinton County. A sober reminder uh, that COVID-19 is around and it can be deadly. In Jackson County, uh, I thought this was interesting. Every now and then we have to remind ourselves about how much COVID we've had. We've nearly hit 3,000 cases now uh, in Jackson County. If you add the prob probable cases and the confirmed cases, you are over 3,000. Wow. So you already know that the population of Jackson County is a little over 30,000. <clears> About <throat> one person in 11 have had COVID-19 in Jackson County. I mean, that makes you think. That is, that's wild, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. All right, well, the other big story we want to tell you about, and uh, uh, this uh, this was big news in Vinton County last week. Anytime mm -hmm. you hire a head football coach at one of our schools, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And last mm -hmm. night, Vinton County hired a new coach, Tyrone Carper. There he is, he's in the middle there, if you're looking on your screen. He was an assistant coach at a very huge high school in West Virginia, Cabell Midland High School. Uh, he is flanked there, if you're watching on television, uh, on the left, on, uh, on Carper's right by uh, Superintendent Rick Brooks, and uh, on the other side, that's Board President Tom McManus. And uh, it was not an easy decision for some reason. The vote was four to one. A Jason Radabaugh board member voted no. This vote came after an executive session that lasted nearly one hour. Uh, wow. Now, we're going to have a detailed report uh, on uh, Mr. Carper's hiring and an interview with him. Our sports editor, Todd Thompson, was up there. So was Red Thompson, Jr., who covers the Vinton County School Board. We'll have a detailed report in tomorrow's edition of the Telegram. And, of course, that will be online, too, on the telegramnews.com. And the only other thing we wanted to tell you uh, we wanted to remind the folks in the Florence Avenue neighborhood uh, in uh, the Jackson Heights subdivision, um, Mayor Randy Evans will be there at the corner of Florence Avenue and Anderson Drive. It looks like there's not going to be rain, so they can actually do this outside. He is going to have a citizens meeting there. People who live in that neighborhood, uh, 6 p.m. tonight, meet at that corner, and he is going to explain a improvement project that they want to do in that neighborhood that he wants the residents to know about up front what they want to do. He'll need their cooperation and he'll need some information and he's going right to the citizens themselves for that. If it would happen to rain, it is supposed to be cloudy today, they'll do it tomorrow at 6 p.m. same time, same place. All right, well there you go. I'm going to get out of the way because you have a very special guest uh, and let me tell you I've known Larry Zorns for a while he does the indoor trade fair out at the Canners Cave 4-H camp. And if you haven't been out there, you That's need right. to go out and check it out. It is so interesting. It, it's, it is. Living, it's living history is what it is. And you can get a lot of cool stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else, I guarantee you. It truly is, Pete. And thank you very right. much. Okay, well, very good. And, and I'm going to also ask Larry... To get me one of those berets he, he's got. Is that, uh, what do you think of that? Isn't that? I love it. Isn't that great? It's called a cam. It's called a cam. Now, see. Okay, I, now you know. I wouldn't have known <laughs> that. And I don't have one in my wardrobe. I think it looked good on James over there, too. It would. I agree. You'll find your one, Pete. All right. All right. Thank you, Pete. And Pete's morning news update is brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell or have any real estate questions or needs, please give Nia a call. 740-418-4135, and she'll be out working for you. All right, so um, our zip printing weather forecast, if you're wondering, it is looking absolutely fantastic for the next few days. For today, partly cloudy with highs around 78. 
Which, strangely enough, when they say partly cloudy, that means more sun than clouds. I don't know why, but that's just what it is. Uh, 78 degrees today for tonight, partly cloudy, lows around 56. Then tomorrow on Wednesday, a little bit warmer, partly cloudy with highs around 82. Overnight Wednesday night, mostly clear with lows around 58. And then, um, you know, looking toward Thursday, Friday, as you can see on the graphic up there, of course, um, highs a little bit warmer, 86, 89, 87, 88. So not looking too shabby for um, this time of the year. Don't forget at Zip Printing, you can get your graduation announcements, all the fun stuff that you need to commemorate your graduate, whether it be a preschool, kindergarten graduate, on up to college and everything in between. So contact Zip Printing um, and they'll take good care of you. All right, our good friend Larry is in the house and Larry's without the other Larry today because the other Larry had an appointment. So normally we have Larry and Larry in the house, but we just have one Larry today. Was that confusing or what? The other brother Larry. The other brother Larry. Yeah. And Daryl, we don't know where he's at. Right. right, right, right. All right, so our good friend Larry Zorns is in the house, and Larry is here to talk about uh, the indoor trade fair, and that will be coming up this weekend, I believe, right? Right. At Canner's Cave. And, okay, so Larry, let's talk for a minute about... Um, this COVID madness and how it has affected your indoor trade show, because I know <laughs> for some reason it's always when the snow flies. Well, <laughs> I what, feel like you guys it, always in, have. Instead of canceling it, we decided to postpone it and moved it to May. And with the, yeah. with the hope that uh, it would work out and it seemed to be. It seems to be working yeah, I've out. Got, I've got 22 dealers right now set up or will be set up. So we, Pretty well running almost at average. Okay. And uh, we'll probably have to do the mask thing, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what what happens out there. Well, and, you know, it's also confusing. Um, right. I feel like just do what you want at this point. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so were you able to have the trade fair last year? We had it in 2020. Okay. So, because uh, typically it's it's over like the winter time. Yeah, it's in January. It's in yeah. January, so we just moved from January to May. Okay, so you just backed her up this year. Yeah, so this you... year we moved it to, uh, uh, like I said, hope, hope, hoping that the uh, pandemic would be winding down, and, and it seems to be. So we're 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 okay with that, and uh, they've got uh, we've got. Uh, some classes going on out there. Uh, it's it's all to do with historical stuff uh, like flint napping and bow making. Uh, uh, they're doing some leather work, uh, making tomahawks, and uh, they're doing all kinds of old stuff. You know, historical. Well, and that sounds awesome. And, and this is such a cool event. If you've never been out to it, it is mm. definitely something to see. So Let's back up for a minute and tell everyone exactly what is going on this weekend out at Cantor's Cave, and then we'll get into some of the details of, about what's going on. Well, the, the the dealers will be setting up on Friday the 21st, uh, and the show is 8 to 5 on Saturday and 8.30 to 3 on Sunday. Uh, all dealers will be in period dress, and uh, all the items for sale is pre-1890. Uh, Anything, there's no plastic or none of that stuff allowed. Uh, it's all handmade, all handmade items. Um, various people manufacture clothing, uh, but they do it the old way, the clothing. Um, uh, they sell, some of them sell china, old stuff, neat, neat old china, um, glassware, uh, there's uh, muzzle loaders, uh, parts, pieces, kits, and and fully assembled guns, uh, mostly from 1680 period up to about 1840. And uh, then uh, there are all kinds of books and clothing. A uh, log cabin shop from Lodi, Ohio will be there, and they, they sell a lot of books. And uh, 
Jason Gatliff, the muzzleloader magazine from down in Tennessee, he will be there. Uh, and he he has a magazine, a, a bi-monthly magazine that uh, caters all, only to muzzleloading, historical stuff. So it's pretty neat. And uh, uh, all in all, you know, it's just a it's just a neat event. Uh, it costs uh, three dollars to come in. I think uh, if you're in period costume, I think it's a dollar. And kids under 12, 12 and under are free. And uh, all of the gate receipts go to the 4-H camp. We donate all that to 4-H camp, and we donate a portion of the uh, table uh, fee to the 4-H camp also. So it helps the camp. And, you know, they've lost the funding from the government. Uh, Ten counties, as a matter of fact, has lost all the uh, funding from state or state and federal government or state and local government. And uh, it's just a neat event for people to come out and see and uh, participate. They've got a cafeteria there in the lodge where the show is, uh, is being held. Uh, they also have uh, 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 drinks, soft drinks available and all that. And uh, any information is, is there, I mean, uh, for the 4-H, 4-H camp. You know, how many years have you all been doing this, Larry? This is the 22nd year. Can you believe it's been that long? Yeah, it had been, though. That's wild. Been. Yeah. And uh, are, are are the Sons of Liberty going to be doing their encampment? Yeah, um, it'll be it'll be Memorial Day the following weekend. It'll be Memorial okay. Day weekend. So it's not this weekend, but it'll yeah, be next it's a, weekend. It's a weekend after, right? Because that's always kind of fun to go out to as well. And yeah, it's and pre, it's, a, it's a pre 1840 camp, and uh, there's not as many as there used to be. You know, at one time we had 175 camps out there, but now it's down to 15 or 20 camps. It seems like all the all the people are getting older, and <laughs> and and there's no, uh, might as well say, new blood coming into it. Mm-hmm. Hardly, very little, and uh, they seem to enjoy the computers more. I guess I don't know, <laughs> but we've got some new ones coming in, and that's good. Keep it alive, and keep the history part of it alive, and that's what it's all about: is is promoting the history of the of the country, and. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a kind of it kind of neat and interesting. I've been involved with it most all my life, so uh, I really enjoy it, and uh, uh, I hope uh, these people come out. Some of them will be converted, as I might well say, to uh, uh, learning the, about the history, and uh, maybe even enjoying joining the camp. And we've had that in the past, people that. Uh, come out there and they really liked it and next thing you knew they were involved in it so that's good there you go yeah so larry what did the world look like back then i'm trying to think like um you know what what did people do on a daily basis just try to survive back then yeah they they lived they lived they tried they they survived they, they had the skill to do it and uh i go back uh, I, I've got to say this, part of my heritage is Native American. My great-great-great-grandmother was Mary Lotus Morningstar. She was a Shawnee Indian woman. She married, uh, one, on my other side, the McLeese's. She married one of the McLeese's. And, you know, it was in 1790s, so, you know, they knew how to survive. Sure. And, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a different time. <laughs> different place uh, so to speak uh, uh, the population was not as as it is now and uh, but uh, they had they did very well surviving off the land and uh, and of course uh, they learned uh, the farming techniques and all that but uh, and the horses and buggies and the horses and and I still have horses and and I, I actually enjoy seeing the Amish around here with the horses and buggies and, and uh, know some of them are friends. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it shows some people that what the roots of the country were and, and you know, how they, how they lived. Yeah, and I think that's what's so interesting about it is, um, 
you all are reenacting, of course, but it's, it's, um, you know, that's how it was back mm-hmm, then. Exactly. And how hard is it to, um, as you're reenacting, I guess, you know, convert from today's world back to that world? When, when you all are doing your, your trade show and your encampment and all of that? For me and for a lot of the others, it's, it's just going from one place to another. And you, know, you kind of live your life like that anyway? A lot of it, yeah. Yeah, a lot of it. Uh, and we just, uh, you know, we're on the land out there, and I am, and uh, I've got my place at the... Uh, I like to be, and mm-hmm. we build, We, you know, I've got some guys, we work and build muzzle loaders and build parts, and uh, we enjoy it. You know, and let's talk for a minute about what you do, Larry, while you're here. Let's give yourself a, a lovely plug. Um, a lot of folks don't know, but Larry here builds muzzle loader uh, guns, and you sell the parts and, and things like all over the world, don't you? Yeah, I have. I've, that is wild. Yeah, I've shipped to Australia, New Zealand, uh, Switzerland, Germany, and Canada. I haven't sent nothing south of the border that I know of, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of neat, uh, and, you know, people contact you from other countries and, 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 you know, they know your work and we want it to be, I want our work to be what I want it to be. I want it to, you know, I don't want it to be no junk and nothing like that. It's got to be top line and if there's something wrong, we take care of it. And, uh, but, you know, I've got one gentleman down in Tennessee that builds guns for me and uh, he's a good builder. He's a old uh, old former Marine Vietnam vet, and uh, I kind of cater to veterans whenever I can. And uh, uh, we just uh, just enjoy do- doing what we're doing. You know, and you're so talented, and I, I think a lot of folks don't realize the um, what you do here in our area and the fact that, that these parts and, and guns are being made in our area, and, and it's such a craft. And... Um, before anyone gets their panties in a wad, the guns that you're building are um, like not the same as like you would go to a gun store today and buy a gun, correct? Well, they're, they're, the guns today are uh, that we do are flintlocks, uh, and uh, we do a few percussion conversions, which uses a cap, and you know, and, but uh, the uh, the thing about our our guns. Uh, we copy from originals. Yes. It was from from a 1680 period up to about 1840, and uh, we have a we have a good following of people, and uh, uh, we have. I had a gentleman from New York. He kept calling me every other day to see if his gun was done. His name was Leopold Baldini, and he was funny. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, with that name, you have to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He was funny, and he bought I think three guns from me. But uh, it's it's kind of neat that uh, you got people repeat customers and customers are out there. That's my best advertisement. Sure. I don't advertise any place other than the Mother Loader magazine. That's it, and the shows that we do. Word of mouth, right? Yeah, word of mouth. Well, and if if you can advertise through word of mouth, then you're doing something darn right, Larry. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So. What will be some of the vendors that I know you mentioned? Maybe some clothing, some china, um, some of the gun parts. What will be some of the other vendors that people would see out there um, this weekend? Well, it, it's it's just a mixture of everything. I've got a thing here that tells you. Well, I can't keep it all in my head. Well, that's um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Patterns and fabric, uh, common to the time period, uh, china, glassware, tinware, knives, tomahawks, eating utensils, candle lanterns, blacksmith-made ironware, leather goods, parts and kits for muzzle loaders, finished muzzle loading firearms, books, leather and furs, games and toys, and other things common to the, to the uh, early American period. 
So what kind of games and toys would there be? Do you know? Well, I don't. That's interesting. I don't really know, but I've never got into the toys out there. I don't That's really fun. know, but they have them. <laughs> now, are there stuff, um, is this a family-friendly event, Larry? Can, is there stuff for the kids to see and do as well? Oh, yeah. They, and the kids uh, that come out there, they have a good time, too. Um, of course, you know, it's, it's dealers set up selling their wares, but, uh, you know, there's a uh, plenty of room to roam out there on at uh, Kenner's Cave. So uh, You're right, and you can't ask for a prettier weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be hot, but uh, that's okay. It's better than what we normally have is snow, you know, in, in general. That's right. right. <laughs> you guys have gotten, um, shall we say, blessed with some interesting weather. Yes, a, yes, a, we have. Several years, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't snow all year, and then all of a sudden you guys Bam. have your trade fair. And yeah. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go over the hours once again. And, and again, this is this On weekend Saturday, at Canner's Cave. Yeah. Saturday the 22nd is uh, 8 to 5, and Sunday is uh, the 23rd is 8.30 to 3 o'clock. Okay. To 3, yeah. So by the time that rolls around 3 o'clock, these guys are wanting to go home. You know, they're ready, okay. they're ready to pack up and leave. It takes them a little while. But, uh, but you know, if somebody's there, we, we don't kick them out. I mean, if they're there and they're looking at something, we don't force them out. So, That's right, because it's and, just know, they're, fun. They're, I, I mentioned the cafeteria there. You know, they can buy, come out there and spend the whole day and uh, buy, their, buy their lunch there at the cafeteria. And uh, it helps also to support the 4-H camp. So uh, they have good meals. Yes, they do. Yeah. And you know, what you're doing is great because the kids, you know, so many, many, many kids have come in and out and, and done 4-H camp a along the years at Cantor's Cave. And, um, you know, due to lack of funding and whatever is no fault of the children and the 4-Hers and everybody else that gets to go out there. So uh, what you're all doing, we definitely commend and uh, thank you for helping out any way that you can. I might mention I went to that 4-H camp when Did I was you? a kid. Yep. <laughs> a couple it's, years it's changed, ago. Yeah, it's changed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, very good. But we appreciate you helping to uh, promote the show and uh, promote the subject for the kids at the 4-H camp. And uh, we're, we're trying to help them. That's, a, that's the best I can say. Absolutely. Well, Larry, thank you so much. Okay. And we appreciate you taking time out of your day as you are a very, very busy fella, to uh, come and hang with us, and, yeah. and uh, much appreciated. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, of course. You know you're welcome anytime. Okay. I'll <laughs> have a good day then. You too. I'm going to head to the... He's got to go work. I'm going to. He's got to go work. Yeah, go for work. Guy's always working, always building something. Welcome back to you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Sure you have a good day. You have a good day as well. Thank you so much. And... Uh, Thanks, thanks to Larry and, and the gang. And uh, we didn't get to hang out with our with our other Larry today, but uh, that's all right. We'll catch up with him another time. <laughs> all right. Uh, before we get on to anything else, our good friend John Boy is in the house. But we did want to take this opportunity to thank our friends at Callahan Hardware, your everything store right here in Jackson. We're getting into, unfortunately, bug season. And weed season and all the things that are pesky this time of of the year um so callahan hardware is your go-to for that please uh, stop and see them and um they will help you out along the way with all your seasonal needs and uh, they're there for you also want to thank chip and kathy smalley at the shop and they are your um go-to folks for custom engraving jewelry repair watch repair uh, if you have any events coming up and you need trophies or plaques or any kind of like award type things, Chip and Kathy can do that for you right here in town. You don't have to order it online and have it come in God only knows when. You just call them, 988-2841, and they'll take great care of you, and they do it right here in our area. So you can't beat that. All right, John Boy is in the house. Good morning, buddy. Hey, good morning. I feel like I'm in detention. I, 
I'm used to be able to see you, but I can't look now. I know. Now we have to just pretend like we're looking at okay, each other. Okay, all right. We're side by side. We're like... Technically. Hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It has to be so deceiving. So for people out there, we're actually sitting side by side and looking at separate cameras. It's super duper confusing right now. But we had to put Larry in that camera because he had on green and we couldn't have oh, yeah, him disappear true. off the face of the earth. So okay, gotcha. anyway, we had to switch the camera and put it that way. That's okay. It reminds me of the old radio story. And not too many people know, but when your dad and I, Big Lou, were on the radio together. Uh huh. Uh, I was actually sitting in Wilson on 788 and he was here on Main Street in Jackson. We did the show together. And people had no idea. They had thought no you idea were in the same we room. Weren't in the same room. That would have been actually very difficult because you can't really um, feed off each other's energy or whatever if you're not in the same room. <laughs> it worked, though. It did. We were able to pull it off. That's because y'all are, I was going to say old pros, but we'll That's just say right. pros. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of hot air going on. I mean, yeah. There probably was too much hot air for one room anyway. <laughs> True. Probably melted the ceiling tiles. <laughs> well, I did bring my calendar with me. Well, good. And today is Buy a Musical Instrument Day. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Buy a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, if you're going to buy a set of drums, it's also known to your neighbors as Black Tuesday. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, Buy a Musical Instrument Day today. So if you were to buy a musical instrument, what would it be? For me? It yeah. probably would be a set of drums. I mean, I, I like, I play guitar and different guitars and things like that, but we already have a piano, so it probably would be a set of drums. Set of drums. Actually, I have a set of drums piled up in my office at home, but they're not mine. Gotcha. They belong to my good buddy, David Leach. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm good with one of those slide whistle things. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> That'd be about as talented as I am play when it comes comb to instruments. Or yeah, spoons. I, <laughs> I want to play the triangle. <laughs> Some spoons. <Ding. laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just at the most inappropriate time. It would be fantastic. And no one ever give Jen a triangle. When you, when you see the orchestra is on stage and you see the, the percussionists and those guys that do play triangles and little and i don't know it's you're like they're amazing i mean they I, <laughs> they hit that bad boy right at the same time and everything <laughs> your timing has to be impeccable if all right. you have to do is ding the triangle once <laughs> during a song <laughs> and also it's national visit your relatives day today okay of course, you only have a 50-50 chance of pulling off that I can't make it because of COVID excuse now, but uh, time to see your relatives. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Other good stuff? Yeah. Hey, I noticed this, and I'm not quite sure anybody else did, but for the first time in the history of television, NBC has premiered their you know, new fall season mm -hmm. with no comedies. There are no comedy shows. Really? Yeah. So is, is it the people just don't want that? They want like uh, drama and know. negativity or what's it's, the deal? I don't know. But speaking of no comedy on NBC, Saturday Night Live, <laughs> 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 this last <laughs> episode on Saturday Received the lowest ratings in SNL history. Oh, it did? Yeah. Wonder so, why. Don't know. <laughs> I guess because it's not funny anymore. <laughs> of course, we were, I'm spoiled, I know. And that, oh. you know, that old man talk where, you know, back when there was Dan Aykroyd and. Well, you had Chevy Steve Chase, Martin. Eddie Murphy, and yeah. <laughs> a lot of those people that were. John certain, Belushi. And yes. It was, it was fun. So yep. I'm going to chime in here about the SNL low ratings thing. Yeah. So one of the things with SNL is people don't watch it live, but they are really good about throwing those skits up online mm -hmm. as soon as they happen. So the skits from this weekend here on YouTube, there's one, you know, it's only been up for two days. 
1.6 million views, million views, 1.1 million views, 1.3 million views, 1.6 million views. So they're they're still getting their audience. Their audience has just moved from cable television to online. So that's interesting. So again, goes back to the no comedies. Um, Thanks, but- James. <laughs> 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 but no, that means that people aren't watching the entirety of the yeah, show. They're, they're picking it, and choosing. They're watching it online and they're watching smaller excerpts from it rather than three hours. with. Yeah. Because none of us have an attention span more than 10 seconds well, now. It also starts at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. It's like three hours long and it's 50% commercials. I agree. And I... I'll be honest with you, since I was like in high school, I've always tried to watch Saturday Night Live. I can't stay up past then to watch it. Yeah, that was a big deal when we're growing up is to stay up and watch Saturday Night Live. But that's not such a big deal anymore. (laughs) I mean, it's hard to watch when it comes on at 1130 and you go to bed at nine. That's true. (laughs) I mean, if if it's on after, you know, a basketball game or something like that that goes into overtime. It's even later. It's even later. Yep. Yep. So no, I could see where people would um, go and pick and choose different skits and and things. Um, so yeah, it makes sense. And of course, all over the news is Prince Harry, mm-hmm. who proclaimed our First Amendment of our Constitution as bonkers, the freedom of speech. He did. Yes, he did. He said it's just a bonkers idea, and of course now. I guess we're going to have to declare our independence from Prince Harry now. <laughs> but, uh. Well, I have to say that the fact that he can say that our First Amendment is bonkers is exercising his First Amendment. That's true. So it kind that of goes true. full circle, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> By the hmm. way, during the pandemic, this is kind of interesting. During the pandemic, guess what surged as far as sales were concerned, from the supermarket. Surge the, from the supermarket. One of the biggest sellers in the supermarket during the pandemic. Twinkies. Hot dogs. About they, the same. They said the hot, <laughs> they, the, they probably uh, last equally true. as long. <laughs> the sale of hot dogs increased 120%. Really? Yeah. I wonder why. Well, they're saying that they were affordable, number one, Mm -hmm. and they are a perfect pandemic food because, you know, they were there whenever you needed them and they're long lasting, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they can taste good, you know, fixed, right? They're Mm -hmm. delicious. And they said they're versatile. Now I was trying to figure out how versatile hot dogs are. I mean, I only know a couple of ways, let's see, on the grill, in the microwave, (laughs) boil uh, it. Beanie weenie. <laughs> yeah, I'll just straight out the package. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Interesting. Hot dogs. <laughs> and, of course, with Prince Harry aside, I think the Brits have done some really wonderful things during the pa- at this end of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw it or not, but... Uh, they're saying, the government is saying that in order to bring the pubs back to pre-pandemic, you know, uh, uh, usage, they are requesting that every English citizen drink 124 pints of beer. Okay. Okay. The finance expert said they call it drastic drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I so, like it. So 124 pints of beer for every citizen in England. So is that we'll per year or? That's for beer. Just beer. But for a year or? That's over a year, yes. Okay. Okay. Or you can try to get your time in real quick. and. I mean, <laughs> or, you know, it. over three days. I Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a little weekend binge there. <laughs> get rid of it. I did my part. <laughs> uh, yeah. Plus. Yeah. And they're celebrating the end of the pandemic, or at least they're getting courts close to the end of the pandemic. There's a pub in England called the Pack Horse. Okay. That they opened back up for the first time and they auctioned off the first pint of beer sold in that pub in a year. They auctioned it off. Oh. And they got over 1,000 pounds, you know, or 
1200 and some dollars okay. for a pint of beer. The I first hope it, pint. I hope it wasn't the same beer that was still in the keg from when they shut <laughs> down. <laughs> but the good news is the, uh, the pub did give all that to charity, uh, cool. to their hospice house in the, in the neighborhood and other things like that. That means a lot. That's, that's a good deal. Yeah. Very good. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, shoot. So did you hear the controversy about the Columbus crew? No. Yeah, so... This doesn't include a masseuse, does it? No. <laughs> okay, all right. No, that's the other people. Um, and then you got the Yankees with the whole team's vaccinated and has COVID. It's so weird. But anyway, <laughs> so the Columbus crew has decided... Once again, I don't even know what they're doing, but they attempted to rebrand again. So, all right. So this all this controversy started way back a few years ago when they said they were going to leave and go to like Arizona or somewhere because they wanted a new stadium and no one was like supporting them. Right. Okay, right. So finally, like some individuals stepped in and donated money and all of this stuff and save the crew, like hashtag save the crew started. Yeah, right. Well then, so some individuals came in, uh, got some sponsors, saved the crew, staying in Columbus, building new stadium, which by the way, if you haven't driven by it, when you do, you'll know what it is. Trust yeah. me, because it is like, Oh, like, so you're driving up, uh, so you hit 315, um, and if you take 315 to 670, it's on the corner of 670 and 315, and it is unbelievable. It's going to be behind, basically, the, um, over the same general vicinity as the uh, Clippers Stadium. But anyway, the Columbus crew now, after all of this, has decided that they were going to rebrand. Okay. So they were going to drop the name. I don't know who, what the ownership's doing, but they were going to drop the name. This was last week to rebrand and drop the crew and rebrand to the Columbus SC. The Columbus what? SC. So there is the old logo to 2014. Okay. Then there was their 2015 to present logo. Thank you, James. And then that was their proposed new logo for the Columbus SC. And do you know what SC stands for? Uh, Do I want to (laughs) know? It's super duper creative. Okay. Soccer club. Soccer soccer club. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I wonder how much they paid for that. (laughs) I don't know. I'm sure they paid some as some millennial marketing person, a whole lot of money. So anyway, It hit the fan. Fans had a fit, same as they did when they said they were going to move and whatever. And again, why do they keep messing with the Columbus crew? Just let them be. So needless to say, the hashtag Save the Crew movement began again. And um, they decided that they will reverse their plans and stick with the Columbus crew name after all. (laughs) They will keep most of their new logo intact. However, it will have a 96 in the bottom of the logo, which refers to the year that it was established, okay. founded. Gotcha. So crew is back to, I mean, we keep trying to change the crew. Everyone throws a fit and then they end up back to where they started from. So I don't even know what they're doing. We'll revisit that logo when they come up with a new one. Okay. Yeah. It's like. I'd like to see that. So if, I'm I'm curious which one of the three is you guys' favorite. I mean, I'm kind of like you, James. I think that the the first one is so kind of like um, vintage now that it's like yeah, cool. It, it's so '90s that it's like almost mm-hmm. like hip again. Yeah, I think but the yeah, bottom pe- one is people stupid. Got up, people got upset when they changed the changed it in 2015 as well. They didn't like that either, even though. I, I would say that's probably my favorite of the, of the three, even though the, the three guys with the, you know, the worker hard hats was kind of their, you know, the symbol of 
the team in the city at the time for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the point is the, and I, I agree with you. I kind of like the second one the best, but it doesn't really um, reflect on what it means. I like where they're going with a new one because <clears throat> it. <clears throat> The other two, the first ones are kind of busy, <clears throat> probably hard to read on a uniform, but I like where they're going, but just SC doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> soccer club, that's right. the best you could come up with, well, soccer, club. soccer club. A lot of them use FC for football club, but <laughs> for whatever reason, <laughs> we, we can't, we can't uh, call it what it's called <laughs> in America, so we have to make our... But I mean, is that just going to be the, is, is every single soccer team going to be the, you know, Philadelphia SC <laughs> and the, I mean, like, well, I mean, there are already a, a lot of teams like crew. Yeah. Well, there, so most of the, like the British teams and like the international football teams, they don't have nicknames like American sports teams do. Like it's, that's kind of an American thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, that might be a good solution for the Washington used to be Redskins. Yeah. They could just be the Washington football the team. Washington the football team. team. Well, that, that is the the Was- Washington football team is the their official name right now. Yeah, But they can just go to the FT. Yeah. They got it made now. Oh, wow, well, we are so creative. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, anyway, the crew's back to being the crew. Right. So nobody panic. We're still the crew. Hey, I've got something creative to talk about. Okay. I think it's creative anyway. There is a lady who was trying to get back at her boyfriend who dumped her. Okay. So what she did, she's from Germany. She faked a wedding. She uh, hired a husband for the photographs and did this TikTok video. And the background music was uh, Narls Barkley's crazy (laughs) and she staged this wedding you know to get back at her boyfriend and she received 1.8 million views on this bad boy just to get back at the boyfriend i don't know and it was a fake wedding it was a fake wedding i I guess she even plans to write fake thank you notes for her fake Wedding presents, I don't know. <laughs> she's going to have to write 1.8 million of them? <laughs> That's going to take a minute. Maybe she can just do one and, you know, send it but out hey, in a bulk email. Her ratings are rivaling that of SNL. That's right. There you go. She can keep that Doing up week well. after week. She's set. <laughs> Craziness. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Hey, by the way, we've been talking about Great Britain. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you see where they have suggested one way to put a halt to the coronavirus. And it might be good for us to think about it since we're betwixt and between right now. What they're saying is that you should use mouthwash. According to the study, it says the mouthwash destroys the outer layer of virus that begins to replicate, you know, in your mouth. Okay. And um, making it difficult for any other viruses to attach to it i mean so gargle so if you take your masks off maybe a lot of people wish that you use the screen (laughs) but you might want to do just that but i I can see this you know listerine shortage in (laughs) five four (laughs) three two you know (laughs) Yes, the Listerine it, shortage of 2021. I mean, it'd be something to try. It would. I mean, listen, it can't hurt, right? That's true. That's true. So, you know, I'm just going to say that there's a lot of us girls out here that are not necessarily all that fond of this mask, you know, removal thing. Because we have just really all saved on makeup and whatnot over the past year. <laughs> I know. You just. You got a zit? Who yep. cares? Yeah. <laughs> no one sees it anyway. It's great. <laughs> anyway, I, and mask of people have adapted to masks too, so sure. they're not going to go away right away. So I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. How do you guys feel? Will you still wear your mask out and about, like you know, if you're shopping or? 
Well, yeah, I think that I, I still carry one. Mm -hmm. So if I go into an establishment and the staff and everybody there is wearing a mask, I put, put it on. If I'm somewhere where nobody else is wearing one, I don't put it on because, you know, since I'm vaccinated, you know, I hope that science works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I don't. So you're a fair weather masker. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> what about you, James? Uh, well, I definitely agree. Like if you're a place where all the employees are wearing them, you should probably put yours on. Uh, and then just in general, you know, it's going to be like, it's, it's going to take some time to kind of just sort of phase it out of, you may be wearing it less frequently in mm -hmm. smaller groups. I don't think it's like one day it's going to be like shut it no. off. I mean, that's going to be the way that some people interpret it. Sure. But, you know, some people were never really on board with it to start with. Yeah. But, but yeah, you know, just be uh, conscientious of other people. What I can tell you, and I was talking with a doctor friend the other day about this at the restaurant. What I can tell you is I'm knocking on wood here. Every year in the fall and every year around February, I get a cold. It just, every year it happens. And this is the first year in a hundred years where I have not, I haven't been sick. What do you attribute that to? Luck? Hand washing, mask wearing, what? All of the know. above. Haven't been sick. I know. I don't know. I, th I think you better make sure you didn't knock on that I wood. I did. I knocked on wood. This coming winter might have a I know, pretty right? nasty cold for you in yeah. store. But no, I mean, I, I do think there's something to it for sure. And well, they say that we'll find you know, out flu this fall. Was way down this year too. <laughs> yeah, we'll find yeah. out the fall, right? Yeah, no, they did say that the Regular flu was flu down. Flu cases are up 500 percent in 2022. <laughs> but why were the flu cases down? So. Yeah. Yeah, was it because of reason. masks? Yeah, masks, social distancing. All of that, home, hand washing, hand sanitizing. Washing, all the above. Everybody being paranoid about it all. Yeah, yep. definitely something to that. <laughs> so, well, tomorrow, and I'll have to, I'll have to, I forgot to ask James to look this up. So we'll show you tomorrow. Okay. New York City's scary new tourist attraction. Have you guys seen it? I don't think so. It is an all, we'll show you. It is an all glass elevator that oh, yeah. ascends into the sky. Oh, I know. I saw that. <clears throat> it goes 77 stories and you are in all glass. So it just <laughs> appears that you are floating into the sky. Okay. I don't think I could do it. I know. I, and I, I don't. I really don't think I could do it. I've seen the, all those all glass things that go over the edge of a canyon that mm -hmm. people walk out on. Couldn't do it. I don't think I can do it. I don't think so. No, not going to happen. Twelve hundred and ten feet above the city. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, you'd have to have something for brains to to get in that thing. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Wait till that elevator gets stuck, right? Yeah, right. Oh boy. I can't <laughs> find my way out. <laughs> Anyway, we'll show you that because okay. that'd be quite interesting. All right. Um, let's thank Carman the Carman. He will be our guest tomorrow here on the program. So we're super excited to have that and to see our good buddy Mark because he hasn't been here in a little while. That's true. Um, so, yeah, that's always good to have him here and talk about all the great things that they have going on out at the car lot and plus a whole lot of other fun stuff. Also, did want to thank our friends at the Filling Station, the store at Broadway and Penn and & Wellston, and Quick Stop right here in Jackson. Uh, if you haven't stopped in, please do so. And they are awesome folks. See why they put the convenience back in the convenience store. Check out Hoser's Pizza, all the subs and sandwiches and salads, and all the great things that they have to offer. So thank you to the whole Zaffle family for being awesome. All right, John Boy, is there anything else you wanted to talk not, about today? Not necessarily. I mean... Just happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you here. Even if you are in the red background today. Oh, that's right. That's hey, okay. I got something we should shout out. What? Marshall Thundering Herd oh. National Champion Soccer yeah. Team. Speaking of soccer, how did we forget that? No. Yeah. Like a just a Cinderella story. Uh, Marshall did win the National Championship, soccer men's soccer championship last night over what? Indiana, yep. I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And they won in overtime, one, one nothing. nothing. 
Oh, yep. wow. Pretty the, cool stuff. The wow. women's title game before that went into a shootout. That was pretty exciting, too. Yeah, a couple good soccer games yeah. yesterday, for sure. So, yeah, congratulations to the Thundering Herd. We're so proud of you. And um, that's pretty neat having, uh, you know, Marshall isn't normally the hotbed of, I guess, the soccer program. So it's pretty cool that they that they win a national championship. And I know the city, from what I understand, is still partying this morning. Okay. So good for them. But All right. Well, John, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. You're welcome. And thank you to Larry. Don't forget about the trade show coming up this weekend at Canner's Cave. Uh, really, really neat to see. If you haven't been out there to do it, it's, it's a good, 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 good time. So, all right. We'll be back here tomorrow with Mark Carmen and the gang. And uh, have a great day. Enjoy some sunshine. And we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.